What do you think of when you think of student community? Do you think of the big club nights where students are sweaty and dancing and singing along to Britney Spears and S Club 7? Or do you think of large lecture theatres where students are studying and learning and gaining new knowledge? Or maybe you think of things like Varsity, where the two unis in the same city or town are going head to head with each other over rugby and hockey um, and football. Or maybe you think of grand graduation ceremonies where students are all dressed up and receiving their scrolls that they've been awarded after three, four or more years of hard work. Or maybe you think of front-led student nights where students are worshipping and praying, listening to a talk from the Bible or trying church for the first time. Maybe that's what you think of when you think of student community. And you're right, that is a part of student community. It gives us a glimpse and an insight into some of the unique opportunities that students are offered in their, in their very pivotal and important years at university. But in those large contexts, you can't know the name of every student. You can't know the story of every student. You can't see the scar of every student. And you can't celebrate the victory of every student. Those large contexts are important, but the smaller contexts are really crucial to building community that is deep, intentional and relational. It's in the smaller context where you can know every student by name, where you can learn every student's story, where you can see every student's scar and where you can celebrate every student's victory. It's in the small that these happen. And so in this church and student series, the first building block that we speak about that is important and essential to building student ministry that is effective and fruitful is student community. And student community is all about space. Space to learn, space to be seen, space to be known, space to know others, space to ask questions and be asked questions, space to eat and have fun with others, space to pray, space to worship, space to engage with scripture, space to wrestle doubt, space to grow your faith. It's all about space. Space to be loved by Jesus, to be loved by others, and to love others. Student community is all about space. And so unlike these big club nights and lecture theatres and front-led student nights, these spaces are best done when they are small. And I really want you to focus on that word, small. Because often in this world, we can despise the small things. We can see the small things as unimportant. Small doesn't seem that grand or, you know, like exciting. But to Jesus and to the kingdom of God, small is significant. Small is powerful. And these spaces are best done when they are small. And so as a church, let's not get wrapped up in numbers or seeing how many students can we get through the front door. But let's think through how can we create a space and a community where students can thrive and flourish as disciples of Jesus and where students can thrive and flourish as they consider if they want to become disciples of Jesus too. It's in these small contexts, these small spaces where discipleship and mission go hand in hand as students gather to eat, to pray, to think, to chat, to learn, to talk, to, to celebrate, to share grief together, to share life together, to do things in the small space. There is value in the small. In the Bible, Jesus takes a small seed and compares it with faith. Jesus outworked his ministry with a small group of men. And Jesus sends out small groups of people to do big kingdom work, to share the gospel. And for centuries, revival and church awakenings began with small intimate groups of prayer and with small groups of brave people being relentless in sharing the name of Jesus with whoever would listen. Small groups of students with Jesus at the centre is big for the kingdom, is big for student mission, because small is big for the student who has been noticed for the first time. 
Small is big for the student who has received prayer for the first time or who has learned how to pray for the first time. Small is big for the student whose mind has just been blown as they've engaged with a new piece of scripture. Small is big for the student who's received breakthrough that they've been praying for for years. Small is big for the student who's asked a question that they've wanted to ask for a long time or who've been asked a question that they've been longing for someone to ask them. Small is big for the student who's been invited to gather around a table with others over food and drink, to fellowship, to laugh, to share life together. Small is big for the student who's learnt how to prophesy for the first time. Small is big for the student who's heard the gospel for the first time. Small is big for the student who's brought their non-Christian mate along and shared faith with them. Small is big for students. So I want to ask the question to you, how small will you go for the sake of student mission?